Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sort of Chaos uh, podcast. Um, hopefully, you guys can see me. Uh, uh, I didn't have the chance, so uh, I think there's a. I think there's already three of you online. Uh, please uh, share it with somebody because I forgot to share it on, share it on my social media. The fact that I'm online, if not, people will see this uh, ret retroactively. Um, today we're gonna have a little bit of uh, a change up. Uh, and uh, I guess since Paul is my co-host, uh, the person I want to introduce uh, you guys today uh, to is uh, called Mr. Mark Edward Davis. He's a businessman and an author, uh, and he did me the pleasure to uh, kind of give me the honor of being my first guest uh, here in a Sort of Chaos podcast. And uh, he's going to tell us today a bit about uh, his book, which I didn't get the chance to read, but I like how it sounds, at least from the title. And uh, maybe he can enlighten us, uh, enlighten us uh, a little bit. Uh, that being said, let me pop him. Uh, let me pop him uh, here on the screen for you guys, and uh, have him live. So, uh, picture in picture, audio on. How are you, Mark? Hey, I'm fantastic. How are you, man? Better than the average bear, as Yogi would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Yogi. How are you, man? How are you? Are you back in Vegas? Oh, no. I'm in Ukraine right so now. So you are in Ukraine and... because it got you yeah. confused me when you called me yesterday and I, you, I had, you had the LA number. I was like, oh, the Vegas number. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I keep it on my Skype uh, ID so I can call anywhere in the world and it still looks like my home number. So Tech, Techno Toys, we, we uh... yes, I am in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> <laughs> just for the appearance of it <laughs> now me and mark worked uh like i said last night in my romanian podcast worked uh, a little bit on a little small project together uh i i had the sense of uh, uh him being a good man and a jolly one uh to to top that so uh uh so. yeah uh i just wanted to introduce him uh tell me about how you've been and tell me about this book you uh, did man it's your second we'll book isn't it yeah, actually, and my third one comes out this week. I've been a maniac. This uh, coronavirus has been really good for me, and I don't mean to downplay the suffering of some, but this has been something I've been able to really focus on. I've got, I'm going to get three books out in three months. I'm doing a, uh, uh, a live summit, and really it came out of about two months ago. I got frustrated because, you know, I've been a men's coach for 20 years, right? Yes. And so I deal with guys. And so Excuse we obviously, me, please, please, do. please tell the people, give them a short introduction because I'm a very... Oh, okay, sure. All right. Hi, my name is Mark <laughs> Edward Davis. Um, I have two main businesses. One is called Dream Connections International, and I do matchmaking between people around the world. And, and it's legit. We've created over 300 marriages with less than 3% divorced. And it's, it's really, truly uh, been very heartwarming and, and rewarding business. But as I've gotten into it for 10 years now, every Tuesday I've been doing a live broadcast, and most of it has been about personal development uh, for men and uh, and about relationship and about ladies and all the rest of the kind of it's stuff. It's much and needed it's nowadays, quite, huh? It is. And um, right now, guys, before this crisis, guys have been swimming in, in, in an identity search because uh, in the Me Too culture, they've been slammed, they're dishonored, they're disrespected, they don't know what it looks like to be a man, they're afraid to do anything, or they're going to get sued by, brought into the HR department for you look at a woman's butt, you're fired. I mean, it's crazy today what we, what guys have to, have to endure. Yeah. And, uh, and so they don't know which way to go. They don't have Well, let's not, models. let's not, you know, petty them to that extreme. We are times, right? Okay. Well, now let's bring it up to the modern. So, Oh, come on, please, Internet, don't do this to me. Man, no matter what the culture is. Oh, we lost you for a second, man. All right, you're back. Yeah. No, uh, I say there's no excuse because a man still needs to be a man no matter what the culture is. Right? I agree. I agree. So, but they're just looking for role models, and so we try to help them have a better vision of what masculinity looks like, its purpose for today. And the purpose of masculinity is for us as men to just lend our strength to the world around us. So when we have to be strong, we have to be willing to want to try to help where we can. It's pretty simple. Now, what said. got me to the book and why we're on this show today is two months ago when this crisis started to hit, it frustrated me to see no 
no leadership, no vision for getting through this. Like when we went through 9-11, it, it, it was totally different. It was like this thing like, hey, America bounces back. We don't take this lying down. You know, we yeah. come back and we come back stronger. There were American flags that were patriotism swelled. Shit, there was this, American fra- flags in Romania, too, when that happened. It was a greater sense of unity. Wow. Back then. It was a huge sense of unity. And now I, I got some of the people I looked up to and respected. I watched their Instagram feeds. They're kind of shriveled up in their house in the well. We're all kind of stuck in our homes again, and we'll get through this. And I'm going like, dude, what kind of weak ass shit is that? I mean, I, I was, I'm embarrassed. And so, to me, in three weeks, I wrote a book called How to Lead in Crisis, and it's a layman's guide for anybody. It can be a truck driver, a school teacher, a CEO. It doesn't matter because what I wanted to do is give people some basic instructions on how to be the calm in the storm, the voice of reason, how to lead to the future. And um, so, I was very proud to get it out. I'm very proud of the work. It's a good book. Looking forward um, to it, to throw eyes on it. Well, thanks, thanks. It's been really helpful to a lot of people, and um, and then I decided to get together men's coaches. Brian's going to be one of them. We're doing a thing called Ambassadors of Hope. I'm getting a summit together, really, to try to change the shift in the mood. I'm yet to introduce my my audience to Brian, but I'm sure I'm sure they'll they'll meet Dave and Brian and uh, all, right, all the guys. No worries. So, how is this no seminar worries. called? What is it? Ambassadors of Hope. Uh, Ambassadors of Hope. Yeah. Sounds sounds uh, like you don't like you mean business. <laughs> I do. I I tell you, um, the first guy I picked for one of my speakers is Rudy Rudiker from the movie Rudy. I don't know if you ever if you ever saw that little football movie with I'm not Sean sure Astin, but uh, real true story. Um, and then um, a couple of other ones that are interesting. I, I like tonight. I'm interviewing Dr. Sean Baker. He wrote the Carnivore Diet, but mm. more than a diet book, this guy is. He's really just, a, he's, he's inspirational and he's really bringing uh, a solid movement around him and, and he wants to help raise men up too. And so there's various people that are coming into this from a wide range. You know, I got Lovely. a guy who, who's uh, one of his brands is the art of adventure. He does adventure trips, you know, and so. Well, that's going to be a bad, uh, like a, a bad hit on him with this coronavirus. I mean, you can still adventure with LSD or something, but. <laughs> 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 but travel wise it's a bit stricter nowadays i hope uh, he's well yeah not for long not for long travel will be opening up very soon hopefully June 15th. If you think but we don't know you know there was well uh, ukraine we know in y- ukraine we know in ukraine yeah maybe maybe hopefully yeah. uh yeah, so so reading today people it, chose uh, people chose two lanes uh, during this crisis they either went for self destruction Or they uh, just uh, whoop ass like you and uh, like got on, wrote a whole book. And uh, th- was the book in, in works and you just kind of like tuned it down uh, now that you got the chance? Or did you just go from scratch? F- from scratch. Just just, full. Yeah. I was, on, I was a man on a mission. I was putting in crazy hours. I've yeah, met you. I, I, I mean, it's it. not like you don't have the knowledge to fill it in uh, that time. But um, yeah, congrats. That must have been like, Thanks. it sounds uh, monumental to me uh, as an amount of work and trying to structure things down. But uh, awesome. Awesome. Thank so, you. Thank and you. It's, a, it's a nice podcast you chose, The Sort of Chaos, uh, to, to, you know, talk about your book, uh, How to Lead in Crisis. Uh, tell us a little yeah. bit about How to Lead in Crisis, please. Yeah, no worries. Is it, is it more just, uh, sentimental? Sorry to interrupt and then I'll let you speak, but is it more uh, on an economical basis? Is it more of a who you are as a person? Uh, what's, is this more of a self-help book? Uh, what is it? Yeah, definitely it's, it fits under self-help uh, without a doubt because it's about the mentality. And the framework is this. You know, in fact, probably three times in the book I made reference to the thing about you know, when you're in an airplane And they say, in case of emergency, grab the oxygen mask, put on yourself first, you know, yeah. before you try to help somebody else. So the whole thing is, you know, you're going to get hit with a storm. So the idea is if you're going to be the, uh, the first chapter is called be the calm in the storm. The idea is you're going to get hit with a storm. Or what is the storm? The storm isn't even about the crisis. It's about the negative in the media. It's about the panic of your friends. It's about the uh, stuff you're going to hear that you need to make sense of. I mean, what is real? What isn't real? You know, it, it's a, we've created a worry culture yep. and, and it's disproportionate to the crisis. So now people are making the obvious conclusion that the cure is doing more damage than the crisis, you know, than the actual disease. So, well, I think they overblown part, it in, in the beginning a little bit, 
with they, they they took took the safer side just to be sure until they figure out what's what and now now that mm -hmm. it came out that it may not be as dangerous uh, as they uh, hopefully they'll uh, bring the economy right. back on because you were right uh at, at a certain point it comes a cost where people need to work to kind of, it, it will cause more death that way than uh, trying to shut everything down unequivocally so yeah well and what they're what you're going to hear in the next few weeks so far every one of my predictions has come true which has been really interesting and cool and and not cool because of some of the sad stuff i predicted also yeah sometimes you wish you're not right right Yeah, sometimes I wish I wasn't right. Um, two of the other predictions I'm going to give to you is that when this thing clears in about a month, most people are getting back to whatever, readjusting to some kind of life. 70% will just be so glad. They just want to celebrate. They're going to be happy. They're going to get back to work. They want to make their life normal. They want to pretend this didn't happen. 30% are going to be changed for life. Where they're, going to, they're going to be germophobics. They're yep. going to be nervous paranoids. Yep. They're going to be antisocial. People who had tendency towards these things were gonna, are going to go deeper down, down that rabbit hole. You, yeah, you, you nailed it. It's kind of like money doesn't make a person. It just reveals what was already in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing with a crisis. It, does, it just reveals what was already in you. Yeah. And, and so the, the good part about it, though, is people, I truly believe people can change because first thing you got to do is it has to be in your face. Has to, you have to realize, oh, my God, I'm reacting like this. And yeah. maybe this isn't the best for me. Maybe... Maybe I want to uh, make a better choice. Maybe if I saw something differently, I could, you know, I could change, you know, like the Dr. Phil thing is, how's that working for you? Yeah. You know, somebody who's living under panic and paranoia and fear and they, they feel the, the stress carrying on them, they're going like, this, this is, this sucks. This doesn't, this, is there another way to look at the world? There's another way to look at this because I want guys to be, to realize you need to fix it now because in two or three, four years, there's going to be another crisis. Yeah. The first thing that started this was back in February. I posted on my Facebook thing this list of every other year the crisis we've had from Y2K, 9-11, Ebola, uh, ISIS. I mean, you go down the list, every two years there was something. And this is even the third um, coronavirus that we've had. And so you realize, you know, oh, oh, plus the 08 crash was mine. The 08 crash was my big crisis. I lost everything. I, I had 5,000 square foot house, Jaguar, seven investment properties, bankruptcy, all gone. Yeah, fascinating and, story. Please tell the people too. Oh well, just the, on the short. You know, I don't want to break your point. No, and the the short version of it was, yeah, I'd, I'd had a uh, business. I had I, I was a distributor for a publicly owned company. I built up a five and a half million dollar distributorship, and I was ten percent of the company's volume. I mean, uh, it was really kind of a, you know, I, I guess it was a it was a it was a great time. I mean, the two thousands were so good to me because of the market. And, and of course I hustled. You don't get sales for Obviously. nothing. You got to show up and win the day, you know, but I hustled and, but it worked, it paid off, you know, the American dream, right. Yeah. And I married a Ukrainian girl and all this kind of stuff was, was bonus. And then in 08, when the crash hit, what my marketplace did was completely shift. And the product I had just literally evaporated down from five and a half million to $250,000. You lost everything. And I lost everything, you know, and moved into my parents' condo. Um, which they had, uh, you, know, you know, it's their condo. They weren't using it, so I couldn't touch anything. They were Disney fanatics, so we had Disney paraphernalia all over every corner of every wall. <laughs> we had to, <laughs> to live with to, that for To add years. to the depression, right? <laughs> yes, to add to the misery, you know. And, <laughs> and so, and we're in Anaheim at Beach and Ball, which is like the ghetto. Yeah. And um, so I'm going from this brand new affluent community up in the Thomas Park in Sacramento, but near the river and And, uh, it was so depressing, but you know, God bless my, my little lady. She was like, Hey, what are you talking about? Money comes and goes, you know? And, and so my mother who was trying to give me the thing about, you know, Hey, they're hiring down at uh, the airport for security. You know, <laughs> so my, <laughs> and, and my little lady's going, you're not going to go work as Homeland security officer at the airport. Go. She goes, look, let me go work for a while. You go figure out your next business. And so, she, and so that's the way it worked for about three years. We were, I was trying to, um, Uh, get work. I got a buddy who worked on Paramount Pictures Studio Lot. So I was on there and I had a desk in an office and I was trying to, I was writing little business plans for independent films. Okay. Uh, but it, I got 500 bucks a piece. It just wasn't, it just wasn't paying the bills. Whatever. It wasn't full business plans. They do these little um, 10 to 15 page, um, you know, pitch books that okay. they do for films. So you're, you're trying to break and, out of a slump. Come on. It was, you did. Yeah. Your best. And, and it was, And it was cool because, I mean, you go on Paramount, man, it's, it's cool. We had our own golf cart. We're going around the movie sets. We're watching, you know, 
one of the guys there worked out every morning with Brad Pitt, you know, who awesome. the gym and we'd go to the lunch cafeteria and the place with hundreds of people. And of course, Oh, there's so-and-so there's so-and-so. And it's a very bright, energetic atmosphere. So it was a great lift for me. And, um, but then in the interim, this um, Dream Connection business, which we didn't take any money on for a couple of years, it was just kind of a love project. It ended up really taking off till finally it was sucking up so much of our time. We ended up, uh, we got some investors, we made it go, and, and it really grew. To you have to monetize it business. as a certain point, especially yeah, if you bring results. It's fascinating. It it's, I, I knew a part of the story because of, of mm -hmm. when we worked together. It really, yeah. it really highlighted for me the... Uh, how much it matters to have a good woman by your side. But more yep. importantly than that, how much it matters for you as a guy to let go of your ego enough to accept that help. Yeah. Whilst, uh, excuse my French, kipping your dick hard, because it's hard. <laughs> you know, a lot of men get validation just for the fact, like you said, you had the world, world at your feet and everything was going uh, great. And then it all crashed. And then you, uh, I guess you having that support maybe might have opened your eyes in a certain way to see that, you might bring this to the, to other people who might need to maybe see that angle that you kind of had to fight through to see it. So it was very inspirational for me. Uh, Thank you. And, and furthermore, it's like uh, you started from a lot of people are um, they start from scratch. They get to a certain point, they crash, and then they never get back up. You know, it's like they can't mm -hmm. handle the. But uh, the, some people, and uh, I hope to be one of those uh, taking inspiration for people like from people like you. It's like going to the gym. You know what I mean? It's like uh, you can get fat again, but if you knew you had this athletic kind of like in the back of your head, it's not the end of the world. You're like, I'm going to get back on my feet no matter what because I've already been to the bottom and I know how to get back up. So you're less scared every time you fail. So this kind of goes in theme with uh, also the, the crisis in your book, right? Because you, you don't have to panic. I guess that's not the... And like you said, being the stable part of even your small community reported that maybe your friends like you said or your close family i guess uh hopefully uh, this book will kind of enlighten us on this subject i know you got your bullshit together so i'm looking forward to it <laughs> <laughs> listen nobody ever has their bullshit 100 percent together but but it's better to start off from at least this place where you have a good mindset to to build on than yeah. uh, to, to just continue you know i i, I equate it many times to the fact that life is an escalator that's constantly pulling down and you have to be walking up against it. If you just stand still, you, the, the, the world will bring you down. People will bring you down. Situations, you'll get your eyes on the wrong thing. The media will bring you down. Yeah. So you just have to stay focused on and take positive steps to go up. And, and it's not that hard, but just don't stop. Don't sit there and just it, let things happen to you. It's easy for some people and hard for mo some other people. I think, uh, I know it's a cliche, but there are in this world thinkers and doers. Or you're a little bit of a mix of both, but you tend towards one or another. And I think uh, doers are have an easy time with the strategy that you say. Just plow ahead. Just put your fucking chin down and just don't let it stop you. Thinkers, they kind of get uh, a little bit uh, distracted, maybe a bit daydreamers. They have their skills. I mean, I tend towards this direction, but... Uh, you get overwhelmed if you, like you said, the, the my greatest challenge uh, as one of these people, these tendency is to, like you said, just to plow ahead. Because if I slow down, I can't get into depression. Uh, I get to overthinking things, and that's obviously not good. So I guess everybody has their challenge, and um, obviously uh, uh, this is something I need to work on in people with my typology. Uh, some people have well, it easier. Well, it's okay you know. to think. It's okay to think, but, you know, of course just it's okay. this Not to overthink. No, but... Yeah, well, overthinking, if overthinking keeps you from movement, just, and here's what I suggest for all, all um, analytic, because probably 65% of all my clients would be considered analytical, yeah. uh, introspective mindset people, which, you know, it, hey, they built the world, architects, engineers, I mean, the, it's doctors, don't, you don't downplay that. It's, it's important that they have such great minds to work. But if it finds you being immobile, just remember this, you can't steer a parked car. That's a lovely so way to say it. <laughs> you point the car this way and just start moving and let your mind help you move and adjust as you go. But, but so many people, and the other thing is I believe in something that I call your inner warriors. And this is something when you're actually engaged, there's a certain part of you that comes to life to help you engage. Mm. And so what a lot of people do is, and you've known that when you're, when you're in a startup project, you're on a crunch, or sometimes you're on a, even if everybody's at least known it when they're on a, under a deadline for a, uh, 
you know, for a, a final exam or something. They're crunching through the night. All of a sudden, they have all the resources to get it done. Yeah, because they they're procrastinators, and that's how they right. feedback loop themselves whole life, like their whole life. They're like, oh, I'll do it then. But there's a there's a real there's a reality to it where when you put yourself in a crisis, you have there's something extra that comes out of yeah. you in terms of you get your chemistry more and your mindset, your focus. Yeah, you, you end up producing more. You get three times as much done when you're all your resources are together than when you're just kind of, ah, I got a week. I agree. So and, but pressure must be true. applied for that to happen. But what you do is put yourself in pressure every day in a, in a positive way where you just go, this is going to be done today and we're going to do it. And, and think about how it applies to the future so you get excited about the outcome. Yeah, that's what um, I try because, to do. Yeah, just planning does nothing. People can sit there just kind of writing a business plan or some ideas out, and they're uninspired by it. And they go, I can't really do this. You know, I don't feel it. I'm not yeah, feeling it. Well, you're not going to feel it until creation. you're actually engaged. Yeah. You know, so you have to plan as if knowing that at the right time, you all your resources will come together and you'll be engaged. So. Yeah. Deep stuff no. uh, at a general level, but uh, on a more particular level, like I guess people uh, – pertaining to the situation at hand uh, are, are just afraid uh, a little yeah. bit and throughout the world, not just the U.S. I'm sure you see that in Ukraine too. Uh, and in times of crisis, uh, it's not only important to keep your cool, but trying to like, uh, if possible, calm others down because it's so easy to get even more divided when resources are scarce, when there's insecurity. Uh, and obviously everything because of social media nowadays has a tendency to get political because of these reasons. And in the end, the, your average human loses instead of, uh, you know, instead of being productive. Uh, sure. How do you handle this? Like, how do you see this? Uh, in reports to the middle class, in reports, I'm curious, I, I, sometimes I'm ashamed to say it, but sometimes I'm more informed with what happens in the U.S. than in my own country, uh, just because it's so much more fascinating in some aspects of it. Uh, and, and in another way, uh, kind of an extension of what might happen in Romania because we're so uh, adept to the American culture and and uh, like everything is delayed half a, half a year here, you know. <laughs> so if, uh, yeah. if, uh, if politically correctness gets a little bit too high in the U.S. and some scandals happen like uh, six, seven months later, uh, it'll be there. It'll be here too. Like people learn how the yeah. scandal sells. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's better than Ukraine where they're 10 years behind everything, but they're trying, you know, they're trying. Um, listen, the first thing to overcome a fear is to, is to hit it with a bigger fear. And I think the thing people really need to be afraid of is coming out of this just completely emotionally fra frazzled, nerves frayed, um, and, and stepping back in a place where they need to rise up and then they have no resources and they're freaked out and they find themselves hiding in the corner. The opposite of that is is to to do. You can go to the basics. For hundreds of years, people have been quoting that. Uh, what is the um, the Serenity Prayer? Right. It's like I'm a know, bit dumb, and you should uh, dumb down oh, things. I'll, I'll say it. No, the Serenity Prayer is a thing they do in the in the twelfth. But it's like you know, Lord, uh, uh, see, give me the courage to do what I can do, the patience to let go of that which I can't control. And the wisdom to know the difference. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I and so to me, it, it's if you look at politics, for example, in the U.S. I don't know about in your country, but in the U.S., we can only actually do something once every two years, and that's vote. Yeah. So it. So what I do is I, I have zero emotional investment in politics. I don't care. I don't watch the news. I can't do anything about it. I can't. Why That's am I so sucking wise. the energy out of my being and my existence, yeah. my limited amount of nerves to spend on something I can't actually do anything about except once every two years? So two weeks before an election, Listen two up, weeks fuckers. before an election, yeah, so two weeks before an election, I'll go ahead and I'll dive in. I'll read the pamphlets. I'll see what each one said about themselves. I'll see all these kind of things, and then I'll decide I'm going to vote. I do the vote, and then again, I let it go because – how, why do I want to give up me as my little citizen, my energy and resources? I need to help better my life. Yes. Give it to something I can't do anything about for two more years. Why? But everybody does it. The evening news. Oh my gosh, did you see they did this? And what are you going to do about it? How are you going to change? Well, I, I can't, but did you see this? Don't stop it. Please. I beg you. I beg you. Care for your own life as much as you do these freaking politozoids. And even before this, 
because now we have this common global crisis. But even before this, it, it, I've been tra- trying to preach this to my kids since 2013. Like, uh, if it's not COVID, it's something else. They, they find a way to monetize this, and it's obviously paying the bills. And they have to compete with other media outlets. They also need to make money. So that's that, this lowest common denominator of quality of reporting news that in the end, like you just said, you can't control it. Now, I lost my dad a couple of years ago. Uh, unfortunately Mm -hmm. and my mom you know she's a capable businesswoman and still active but um uh, being alone in the house and all that stuff it's uh, some sometimes you have if you have your better half you have somebody to bounce ideas off of and uh now with this crisis she being alone she keeps reading this articles you know like you know maybe this was uh maybe this was they say maybe this was uh fabricated by humans maybe it was a lab Mm -hmm. in wuhan maybe you know maybe Mm -hmm. they will should they force vaccination and exactly reflecting your thoughts i'm like mom We have no control over this. We just have the situation at hand. I'm like, don't overburden yourself with this. I see her every night and I feel I need to call more often just to kind of like re-bring her down to kind of like not not let her be so distracted of Yep. We, we we have no even if it is man-made even if it isn't we have no say in that there's nothing we can do to change it uh we can only find solutions to go further ahead so like you said all the other buzz will just drain us of energy make us pessimists and we're gonna get exposed to it anyway it's like there's no denying it no matter how yeah, anywhere, that's okay, but though. you can limit that you can limit that you know here's the thing that's interesting and this is what there's such a and you're gonna appreciate this there is such a um censorship going on right now oh, over don't get me started what's being said so when i published my book the first time i went out there they rejected it because in the intro i says you know i know we're all dealing with the COVID 19 situation the coronavirus and you know it's something where you know we're overcoming and so without that or any other crisis that may or may not, not be in the future you just need to learn how to deal with crises i gave no medical opinion about it i did nothing else except give it a historic context where i'm writing from you today they bounced it because i used the word coronavirus and COVID 19. get the hell so out of here no no i had to resubmit it without those words and and so here's the thing anybody who wants to talk about that and isn't part of the official approved ordained network of the world health organization um, doctrine is going to have their stuff rejected and one of the ones was these two doctors out of Kern County in, in California who are doing all the tests. Oh, did, you didn't saying, okay, suggest now, a fucking cure for it. You just said the context of what's happening to the information we have at hand. There was no, like you didn't say to put uh, some sort of tea I'm in. I'm just and, telling you. I can show you the emails no, from I be- Amazon. I believe you because I heard <laughs> crazy shit. I'm just saying. Okay. But here's one of the things that came out of it that also is not getting reported that I want you to have because the more guys I can get like you who have a voice to understand this and listen to what I'm saying, the mayor of Los Angeles, who's probably among the more crazy ones, right? He wants to close the city down until there's a cure. Yeah, I I saw on Rogan. He's exaggerating. Yeah, except here's one of the things he said. He didn't even realize the importance of this. He said, we we finished doing all these thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, maybe 100,000 tests. And he says, one of the things they found was thousands and thousands of people who never got sick but had the antibodies. Okay. So how do you get an antibody if you never got sick? And this is where, if you've heard the term, herd immunity yeah, comes into play. There's something just about us as biological organisms where we are designed to help conquer these things as they come into our herd. Well, yes, so but, the strong but... among us who have a healthy immune system can get it, defeat it, and now we have antibodies that were intended. Yeah, but to that means they the were week. they were non symptomatic, not that they had some sort of a pre-existing defense against it. I'm just uh, saying my theory. And like you said, theory. it's not the first coronavirus. Some people develop their immune systems differently. Correct. They might have had something tangent to. We're not uh, scientists, obviously. We're just shooting out of our ass. But at, at a biological level, we differ so much for so many ways that maybe the way they were exposed in the environment, they might have a better chance to develop antibodies. But to get to that herd immunity, I am just scared for like I have young friends, old friends, doesn't matter, family that uh, have pre-existing conditions uh, like asthma. Uh, God knows I smoke, uh, not but whatever. I lived a good life. I understand. But how do you think we survived the other two coronaviruses without doing anything? 
no, no. next year they were just not heard of again. No, they have to do something. It's, it's clear that we have to do yeah. something. The, the world will crash and the, the damage will be. If we stop this economical like machine that has to keep rolling, to like it, it's going to be chaos before it starts back up. True I'm, chaos. I'm, not, I'm, I'm too fucking lonely to stay inside because I have to watch Netflix. Go cry me a fucking river. My granddaddy yeah, got that, shot out in the not... fucking first, Second Listen, World War. It, at the beginning of my book, I referenced Dr. Um, Victor Frank who wrote the book Man's Search for Meaning because he was taken into a Nazi prison camp. Oh. You know, here's a guy who was a very affluent doctor and in Aust Austria, obviously one of the most beautiful countries in Europe, and, and he was taken and stripped of everything. But he found purpose in it by trying to study who survived and who didn't, who, what gave people the, the um, wherewithal to survive such things. On oh, the shit, is that book like still politically correct nowadays? Because <laughs> I can see the people start to, oh, it's prejudgmental. No, it's psychology. It's pure psychology. He was a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and a neurologist. And he said, really, the thing that helped people survive crisis was if they had purpose, if they had a reason, if they had direction, that they would say, I, ha I have to get through this because I have something to do. And so what I come out of my book is, is three basic points. One is I teach people like how to not emotionally react when things come in your face. You have, and second of all is to be the voice of reason. When you realize, you know, of all things up and down, what you really realize is what's most important in life is our relationships. It's having something meaningful to do. And it's finding places that make us happy. You know, so in all the end of the day, carve the rest of it away. Realize materialism comes and goes, things come up and down, but find out what's really most important to you. And then finally, you have to have a vision for the other side of the crisis. You have to have something you want to look forward to, and you want to invite people along so you give them hope. And only hope is the only thing that gives you optimism to rise above a negative situation. So all nine chapters in the book lead you in a, in a process to just come to that, be that person that when a crisis comes, you, you get your bearings on straight, you get your information that you need, you don't react, and you, you look for the opportunities. Because those who look for the opportunities of crisis are the ones who are years later going, man, I wish I saw that. Well, they were looking for it in the crisis. Yeah. You have to be the kind of person who says, okay, what has changed? What do people need now because of the change? What are they going to need when they're after this crisis? And can I be part of fulfilling that? There's your opportunities. But if your head is not straight, you're not looking for that. You're just in panic mode. Yeah, but some people don't have a choice, man. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. And uh, it's, apply, it's applicable to... Give me an example of somebody who doesn't have a choice. I love a challenge. No, it's, it's a choice. There's always a choice, but there, is, there's no denying. And even in the U.S., that there is a minimum poverty line that... Um, maybe I was lucky enough to develop a, a skill and whatever to not get to it. But, uh, there are people who like, like you said, you have to, um, what is it called? Pavlov's pyramids of needs. I think it's called, I forgot the fuck. I'm Pavlov's too stupid. Dog. To... No, you're talking, you're talking about, uh, I'm too stupid. Um, you know, the pyramid yeah, of needs. Yeah, the hierarchy of needs. I know yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot the good name of the guy. My people always correct me. But yeah, I think it's some something like that. Like there's a th certain threshold of where your life can be. Uh, I'm not talking about people who had perspective in their lives. I'm talking about the majority who just maybe hard workers, maybe blue collar people uh, who just, uh, if they don't have that minimum to kind of keep their family and they really don't know not what they're doing, not what they're going to eat next month, but next week, you know what I mean? Or maybe tomorrow, even worse. I think that, that that's so easy to preach to that person to kind of get their shit, to uh, kind of see the bigger picture, but to so hard being in their shoes. It's, e it's easier for me because like, like the pyramid of needs, of course, uh, I'm not in immediate danger. I have shelter. I, ha I still have the possibility to, to make an income whilst this craziness is going on. So for me to take a step back and kind of be the stable one, uh, maybe in my relationship, maybe with the friends and family around me, it, it, it's easier because I draw strength from the fact that in a way or another, I kind of clawed my way to having the stability, you know what I mean? But maybe... If I was in that person's shoes, they can't even like two kids. You don't know if he could be back to work tomorrow or not. Uh, have a, I have a friend who opened a gym, like literally in February. <laughs> he mm -hmm. invested in all this equipment. Now they're all closed and they foresee them to be closed. Or even if they're going to open them, they foresee people not coming for a year or two. So uh, there's people who 
there's diff okay. different levels of tension, and I, I'm, that's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? Let me ask you a question. Please. What can you do for them? Uh, for them directly at the moment? Yeah. Uh, not much. Okay. How is that different than the negative media, the scare tactics, the politics that's every two years from now? Uh, it is different in a little way because Come. if uh, people, uh, let's say over this, uh, I don't want to say comfort line because you your reality can change within an instant. Everything changes the context. But like uh, uh, I myself, if I'm in a position, for example, to have an employee or whatever the hell, I can uh, sacrifice a bit from you can hire one. what I have. And no, 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 I meant I can make an effort even if we don't have uh, work to kind of rehire my employee and maybe still help him out. Uh, just being conscious of the fact that you have maybe a little more privileged position, even if it's shit for you, everybody has their own hill and report to everybody, right? They seem big to them. Uh, maybe you can help out outwards. You know what I mean? Like uh, maybe you're, uh, I started being helpful to reaching out to people who right. need help. So it's little so things you can do. Way, what's the best way you could help somebody? You becoming prosperous. Yes. Well, see, here's the problem I get. No, listen, because I deal with this, especially in California, Southern California. There's so much of this um, empathy for the hurting that they don't they don't do anything for themselves. They almost feel guilty for prospering when there's somebody else hurting. I shouldn't be happy. I shouldn't have prosperity because there's other people who are hurting. Because everybody's suffering from fair. imposter syndrome. <laughs> it, it, and it is. It, it's totally, you know, it, it's like a political correctness of putting guilt on you for being happy and prosperous because there's somebody else in the world who isn't. You know, I have go, that. Well, I just. I have, yeah, I it, have that from my dad. Like you'll never like, because he started from real, real shit. I remember yep. those days. Then we had success. So I have a report in both being dirt poor and whatever the fuck. And he's always like, you're not, yeah. you forgot the light on. That's one banana for a kid in Africa who couldn't, couldn't eat it. And you have it. And you just wasted it because you forgot the light. You know, it was this kind of mentality. Wow. And he was a good man. And he taught me a lot of things. But uh, as I grew and learned to kind of uh, be introspective, I kind of saw this is one of the things I should be working on. Kind of feeling guilty if I have a little bit of success because maybe in some weird way. But I solved that. I solved that by... Uh, him wanting me to take over his company, uh, maybe when I was 24 or something, and I yeah, but isn't I, and it interesting I, that's the first thing that comes to your mind even now. Of course, and it will always stay with me in a way. It's, it, it's, uh, it's I don't want to let it. I, I don't want to act upon it, but I don't want to let the uh, memory of it go because it reminds me of my dad. But it's okay. But I solved that within you. my. I I solved that within myself by denying to take over the company. I said my brother can have it, which he did, but he couldn't keep it. Uh, and then I started my own thing. Then I kind of earned my balls in front of my dad. Thank God before he died, that I could uh, keep my keep my chin up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm always thinking about the fact that if I even would wouldn't have done that, I already feel crippled sometimes by feeling a bit. Uh, bad that I maybe have it better off than some of my friends who also try hard or whatever the fuck. But uh, if I would have not done that step to kind of start from scratch myself, uh, I think I would have lived with a crippling. Uh, maybe I would have slipped into this crazy political correctness without thinking type of thing you're talking about. No, listen, you're not alone. A lot of people do this. I mean, you ought to be proud of yourself that you did you know, try to change things, be different, rise above. I, I just, I just yeah. try to tread the line between confidence and arrogance. Uh, I don't think about it too much because people will judge anyways, but I also don't want to let myself slip too far. You know what I mean? I always yeah, try to remember you... myself that I'm from a village uh, somewhere in like right. the city. Can I give you a couple of tips on this? Please. Okay. Um, first of all, two of the most successful people in the world right now, uh, one of them is Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, right? The Rock. And, uh, and the other one I think of is Jennifer Lopez. Both of them tell you, they, I remember where I came from. You know, I'm Jenny from the Block, right? It was her famous song. And Dwayne Johnson's always saying every morning, he says, I remember where I came from. That's why he calls his, his company Seven Bucks okay. Studios. Because he remembered, hey, I got fired from, from uh, semi-pro football, and my dad had to come pick me up. I had $7 in my pocket, you know. And uh, so he says, I always want to remember where I came from. But does that mean they don't? succeed because how can they help people well now because they can hire people they can mean they can be a blessing to many many lives but the problem is if we have an inherent what i call shame shame's different from guilt guilt is you know you're a kid you break the neighbor's window ah uh, you know i should go fix that you know i, I take responsibility i feel guilty I, I shouldn't have broken this window shame is this inherent feeling that there's something wrong with me there's just something inherently wrong with me and 
And so to overcome when you know intellectually that you carry this misperception of the value of money, that it, it holds you back in some ways and, and makes you feel guilty to move ahead because then other people can't move ahead, it's going to keep you where you are. And the best thing you can do for somebody else is to be in a place of abundance where you have extra to help somebody else. Yeah. So limiting yourself based on this uh, false guilt perception actually is the worst thing you can do for the people you want to help. Yeah, unless you're an arrogant cunt in which you need to dial it back, in which case. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. But, uh, you know, if you ask yourself the question, am I really finding my potential? Everybody goes, no, I know I, you know, I, know what I, I should do be better. doing, and I'm not. I let myself off the hook, and I back off. Yeah, let me give you one thought on this, um, because this is important to me, and it is something I talk about. You remember the movie Saving Private Ryan? Yeah, of course. Okay, there's a scene at the end. Tom Hanks gets shot, and it's the fatal wound, and he's bleeding out. He realizes, I'm not making it till tomorrow. And he grabs the kid and by the, by the shirt and he says, just says, earn it, right? And that movie freaked me out. I mean, I, I was, for days, my brain was spinning on that for days afterwards. And finally, what did he mean by that? And I realized what he's saying is like, I'm, I'm not going to have it tomorrow or the rest of my life. And I'm giving my future to you so you can live on. And he says, you right. better make it good for both of us. You better live twice as hard, twice as much joy, build twice as big a family, have twice as much sex, have twice as much everything for both of us. Go live for both of us. And I think this is where gratitude comes in. You attract to yourself what you're grateful for. And so those of us who are healthy, who have the opportunity, we should do twice as much, live twice as much. And then we're in a place where we can give to others. But I think the biggest thing we can do for ourselves, for our health, our emotional health, our wealth, our health, our happy, is finding gratitude and joy, finding places that make us happy, finding things that we're grateful for, because we multiply the things that our mind focuses on. Yeah. And if we want to solve suffering in the world, the best thing we can do is be prosperous. So we can do something about it. Okay. I can, I can dig with that. But uh, <laughs> there, there's people who, like I'm the type of person who, uh, it, it sounds counterintuitive, but I'm no, I'm not special. There's a typology. But when I see death uh, and misery around me, I get more um, grateful. Some people, when like like every time I lost a close relative or something happened, obviously I was destroyed uh, in the moment. But then sure. it, I always drew force from that. But on the contrary, if things if you leave me to, uh, you know, like uh, things are going too good, and I kind of lay off the pedal a little bit. You know what I mean? I get complacent. Maybe I start to uh, get distracted and maybe fall back too much in social media or whatever the fuck the buzz starts in my head and then I, I become miserable like it goes right but it, it's always interesting that uh i had a girlfriend obviously in the end we didn't match because we became codependent she was the other way around but every time she encounters some death or something some hardship uh, there's more uh, you know she would just break down uh completely completely and i had to kind of like give my energy then so that's why it became codependent she was unsavable always a victim type of personality but when she was prosperous she rode that wave to the moon like she she once she got the ball rolling and she was like she never she i'm the opposite i get a little bit more uh, success i'm comfy i need a challenge or something i don't know yeah. i get some some hardships a little bit of death i'm like fuck this shit i'm not jerking off until i fucking make a step like until i have blue balls like i keep, keep myself targets and like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> I, i'm just interested it fascinates me always how yeah. uh, people implement these strategies you mentioned based on their typology you know you you're, you have what they call um, a uh, monetary thermostat. You have a number in your head that you're comfortable making, and you know it's like a thermostat in the room. Temperature. It's in not the in room, the right? money. No, no, I don't think it's in the money. For me, it's in the validation. I guess. Uh, mm, interesting. Having access to money, not that access. Like that we were poor, then we had the possibility. Even when I had, we had the possibility. That was, um, like uh, you, even if we had like a nicer house, my dad would be like, that's the way my parents were. If uh, you don't yeah. need to know the monetary relativity of it, but my dad, uh, 10 lei was a uh, kid's lunch money. I would get eight lei just so they taught, I don't know, this weird, maybe the shame kind of thing. Like, uh, I forget my point because I smoked a weed, but <laughs> a little bit of weed, but <laughs> <laughs> I was going somewhere. What the it fuck is this? It doesn't matter. Saying? Okay. It's all good. Yeah. Hey, it's a good conversation. And I want to, um, I want to just uh, tell guys, I think that the, Anything, anytime you want to go to another level, you want to raise your standard, you want to take something else, um, first thing you do is you have to see it, you have to visualize, you have to pre-live it. So, you know, I just say right now in this time of crisis, um, 
you know, first of all, go get the, I, I did half the books in a free PDF. Yeah, let me and let me just uh, take you off the, the screen here for a little bit. I'm going to show the people uh, uh, here where to find it on Amazon. Uh, so, uh, guys, if you can see the screen now, it should be like uh, it's uh, c uh, called uh, "How to Lead in Crisis." Uh, you also have his first book here, "International Dating," which, uh, which talks about more. I'm guessing the the business side of. Uh, what he does, but I'm sure they both have uh, the same uh, thread of wisdom. Please uh, check it out, and hopefully this whole craziness will clear out so that uh, we have access to Mark uh, at seminars and stuff for those of you interested. Uh, can people find you in the near future? Yeah, let me give you a couple things. Um, first of all, you can always write me, Mark, at markedwarddavis.com. Um, I also have a free, basically half the book is a PDF download, um, and that's at totalman.club not .com, but totalman.club slash lead in crisis. And there's a hyphen between the those. So it's totalman.club slash lead dash in dash crisis. Go download it. And that'll also get you on my uh, email list for Authentic Man. We're launching a men's magazine here in another month or so. You can get all, all the notifications on that. Oh, you're, so. not, you're not fucking around. You're on this train. <laughs> all right. So, guys, this, I, is the, I, I, <laughs> this is the website. All right. So totalman.club. At least I can do is plug it for you. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me, man. Uh, so you, you said totalman.com. Where else could they find you, you said? Uh, uh, first of all, you can write me, mark at markedwarddavis.com. So if that's you just want to write me an email. Mark at markedwarddavis.com. Mm -hmm. So you can write uh, him at this address without this little stupid typo I did, obviously. And like I said, the free, the free download is at totalman.club slash lead dash in dash crisis. All right. Awesome. Um, man, uh, it was lovely to have you. Uh, I wish we could have uh, shoot the shit longer. Uh, oh, I know. Well, hey, I, I'm always around. You know, I can be glad to come back and continue. We can talk about dating around the world. We can talk about uh, oh, we have leadership. Some, some, we can talk about anything. I, I have some uh, curious ideas of, uh, about your ideas when it comes to dating. Uh, All right. And I would love to do it again. Uh, but okay. until then, congratulations, Ben. Uh, Thanks, I'm really brother. happy. I appreciate it. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, okay? Hey, you too, man. Good right, luck man. on your podcast. I'm glad. I'm glad to support you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Peace. Stay cool. Have a good one. Bye bye. 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 All right, people. So that was uh, Mark Edward Davis. Um, he's an insightful man. And throughout the years, I had the pleasure of working with insightful clients. Uh, I'm uh, hopefully going to have uh, them over here at least uh, until the uh, air clears uh, through fucking Skype or whatever. But hopefully here in the studio too, so we can get uh, in depth on, on some of these uh, stupid theories I have and bounce them off these people who know and thought about these things way uh, more than uh, I did. It's uh, bounce perspectives around. It's fun. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry I didn't fucking hype this more, but I literally before I went live, I was changing like my girlfriend's tires and I was giving her like fucking juice for the battery because she didn't move her car since this whole covid crisis so it's all it was all like deflated and all this shit i'm still i, I stink I, I still have dirt on me and i stink so uh uh i hope you enjoyed it uh please share and uh i know it's always three of you but uh hope you got something uh, insightful out of that uh follow mark uh, and i will see you guys when will i see you guys i will see you guys uh next wednesday in English on this channel and then next Thursday uh, in Romanian and then I have a, also a little clip a little surprise for you hope I get it done f since then uh, with that being said uh, you guys want to ask something before I go oh shit Rada is here uh, Mirela is here hi Mark nice seeing you in Cosmin's podcast not sure you remember me we met in October in Bucharest maybe he does uh who else? Hey, Raluca was here. What's up, baby doll? Maslow's. Yeah, I, you, you guys always correct me on Maslow. I'll never remember it. I remember the, what the fuck it means, right? That's how my brain works. I'm too stupid. I'm too lazy to learn them. Let's face it. But be lazy long enough at a certain category, you'll be stupid on it. You'll never, like, bounce back. That's me with names. Like, I, if, you, if we shake hands, when I reach the second person, you're 
girl with big tits number two <laughs> by that time like my brain is stupid and i don't even try and that because i have other processes going in the background to each his own right what else have you been? hey the beat on me high five pounds thanks what's up bye um much appreciated if you guys want to you know i don't know if you saw the podcast last night but i was trying to uh i was saying i donate on my patreon you know to covid but this month i chose to uh, uh buy some cbd oil for uh, a fan of mine who's a paraplegic and going through some pain some concentrated one uh happy to report it's working fingers crossed i'm happy for her and if you guys, it's nice that you guys uh, do hear Super Chats or whatever these call, Bina Mihai, uh, thank you so much. But if you want to help her, at least for uh, the foreseeable f- uh, period where I donate uh, this money to uh, to charity, maybe we can get her a few more. You can do it on Patreon, right? And if then if you don't hate my stupid face, then you can unsubscribe. I couldn't blame you. <laughs> what else have been people saying? Uh this guy though he know how to speak yeah well, he, he's a you know gentleman who's been through life <laughs> oh shit, dude um let's see you guys writing something else um it feels so weird to be live at 7 20 like i'm a night bird it's still fucking lights be- behind my black curtains it's like I feel more serene at night. It's like people chilled the fuck out already. All the religious people went to sleep already, <laughs> feeling guilty. It's we can talk dirty at night. Now I feel like my mom is judging. <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, challenging channel. Lots of times I agree, and thirty percent I get triggered. Ah, I couldn't blame you, buddy. Sometimes I piss off myself. <laughs> What's up, Mirella? That's yeah, all right. I'm sorry for being late. Why? Because why are you sorry for? Because I was stupid. I didn't even get the chance to post the picture except fucking. 20 minutes before yeah you're forgiven because of my stupidity uh what's up people come on give me some thoughts am i still live i'm too stupid for this all right uh i guess all three of you have had enough of my stupid face uh <laughs> uh fuck it you know what i'm not going let me share this fucking uh episode somewhere you should put in there links for amazon for the books Oh, yeah. You know, I I used to... Let me see if I can. Thank you, Raluca Iwana. Maybe you should be my social media manager. (laughs) Mark Edward Davis. Here we go. Actually, I'm going to put this link to... It's not an affiliate link. I don't even know how to set that up. But um, I'm going to set up this link for those of you curious. You'll find it in the fucking description. Um... Why do you have to insert a fuck every time you talk, dude? It's because you your brain is slow and then you have to say words in between. Why does it have to be fuck, though? Why can't it be fun? Shut the fun up. All right. So paste. Okay, you, can, you guys can find the link uh, in the description. I would uh, highly recommend Mark to give me some money so I can make his audiobook. <laughs> No, to in the future, hopefully, uh, have an audiobook because I didn't get a chance to tell Mark, but I haven't read actually read a book. And it must be like, except Jordan Peterson's one, which I read half, and then I got the audiobook afterwards and listened to the other half. It must be like eight years, or I don't even know, right? I don't read, I'm too dyslexic, I fall asleep. I'm stupid, right? Like it's, but I can listen to it in the car and whatever the fuck. I love uh, audiobooks. Uh, so Mark, uh, make an audiobook for that. I'm sure it will it will bring in more people to whatever you're preaching. Seems to be good. I, I wish I'm gonna have him again. Uh, we're supposed to go on a little longer, but like I said, I was late. My bad, Mark. Next time, uh, we'll shoot the shit more and we'll get into relationships, which is my uh, main course of interest. Uh, let's see what the Roman says. Uh, also, Men Club's website. <laughs> hey, Raluca, don't you have a job to do? <laughs> uh, sorry, I can't say much. I'm having a quick meal and got to get my rear end to work ASAP. But I'm watching you in Dracula voice. Ah, fuck, I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't say much but i'm having a quick meal why is it fuck dracula 
Italian. I'm having a cook a meal and a cut it to my ear to walk a sap of blood. Why in Dracula voice, <laughs> Roman? Uh, well, here, one peace of mind. When I smoke uh, and get verbal, I get a bit hard to follow. So let your guests talk a bit more. Uh, no. <laughs> How about no? How about this be as authentic as it can? No, I know. I, I tend to do that in real life. I know I can work on being a better host and all that jazz. But at least to start off, when I talk to a person, we did we don't really even Paul. Like I tell, shut the fuck up. Like uh, when we used to work together, he's like, hey man, you heard what happened? I'm like, shut your stupid face. Shut up. Why we can talk about it again? I'm like, no, it's not the same if you don't fucking go in first time spontaneously. I need the the, the chemistry to be real. I need to see if I'm really interested or not, and then kind of get down to business because it's that first initial anticipation of something catching your interest, right? Where you kind of talk about it real uh, fired up and that gets people fired up, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah. But on the on this side, I have to kind of let people talk a little bit more. Sometimes I don't. I feel like I uh, have a good average. And I like discussing stuff. If I If I feel like I don't understand something, I should let the man finish and... Uh, go back to it but uh, I sometimes tend to kind of stop him at the point and make him digress what I need to work on if you ask me is uh, kind of bring that person back to the point he started on from so we can kind of make loops in the discussion and kind of get back to the point to like a singular narrative that I can work on but live and learn ladies and gentlemen live and learn um I'm done for today, so yeah, nothing to do. Ah, you can do, uh, what is it, uh, Roman's uh, job, because <laughs> he obviously procrastinated until this fucking hour, and now he's watching me in Dracula voice. <laughs> How do you watch somebody in Dracula voice? Um <laughs> <clears throat> I still have uh, half of the cigarette, people, so uh, I ain't going nowhere. This is my show. I can I can sit here silently doing nothing. Hey, let's do something to demonetize this clip. You want? Let's put on a song. Let's see what songs I heard lately. Guys can still ask questions. Why? Who the fuck would ask questions? Didn't share this nowhere, and it's fucking three people watching. <laughs> I want to meet these people. I want to know about you fuckers. Let me let me put on uh, some music while we do that. You guys know this song? I posted it on my uh, music channel too. It's not my music channel. It's like a channel of music I use in the show. Hold on. Uh, it's called. How the fuck did I call it? Uh, Romer Chial. Come on, baby. Roman Jail soundtracks. All right. Um, when I'm down, this song always gets me back on my feet. When I'm too lazy or maybe a bit hungover. Uh, oh, my little kitty's meowing. All right. I'm too stupid. Joanna is not here. Joanna is a good girl today, and she's doing her gym in the living room. Like a fucking badass. And uh, I think my gym was those fucking four tires kind of <laughs> putting them in my car and taking back off. That was my gym for today. Uh, how the fuck do you search a channel? I'm a YouTuber for fucking eight years and I don't know how to fucking search on. Uh, I wasn't on a channel. I was still in search. Guys, is YouTube going to fall? Did you guys see that Joe Rogan fucked off to Spotify? How crazy is that? And uh, it's a uh, rumor to be a one hundred million uh, dollar contract. Chup, motherfucking ching. Good for Rogan. I'm so happy for him. Like YouTube is getting restrictive enough. Like God knows every v video I did. Like take the video last night. What the hell did I say? I didn't say nothing. It was all about you know good shit mostly. N demonetized. I don't understand. Like what? Because why? Can you say the word fuck. Why? Good for Rogan. I hope he. I hope Spotify doesn't, uh, you know, since they're Spotify and their own entity, I hope uh, they can provide a, a larger 
set of words for Rogan to use. Not that he would have been afraid to do so here, but he paid for it with being demonetized. So good for Rogan. 100 mil. I'm sure he, he was content with what he had. I, I, I think it's, he just needed uh, to take it to the next level. I mean, if that means even more freedom of speech and money, then why not take it? Good for you, Joe. Don't kill all the deer. Come on, you... Why can't I find that song? It might have been taken down. It's by Anderson Pack, I think. People, the podcast is over. For those of you who came in, tune in to uh, listen to Mark. Now we're just listening to music, if uh, this uh, guy can find it. So I don't know if I'm pressing a search, if I'm searching the channel or... By the way, I've listened to some songs from Cherb, the rapper, and he is amazing. I am not a fan of rap songs. Woohoo, Cherb, we got you a girl who is introspective. He likes your lyrics. Uh, I'm glad you like him. I I'm glad you like him. I can't demonetize. I wanted to demonetize this video with that song, but I guess I, it's going to stay monetized because it might have been taken down. Uh, okay. Let's see what else is up. I'm afraid to open news. Let's open some news, all right? Nels. I, uh, I just wrote juice and I'm, like in, <laughs> I'm in some sort of database. Uh, news. Let's talk about news, the most boring thing. <laughs> Let's talk about the thing Mark said not to talk about, you know? <laughs> Let's do precisely the opposite. I don't know, fuck. I try not to get faced. It's good for, uh, you know... Still a quarter of a cigarette. Let's see. Images. Not images. Why, why would you press on images? Press on Nels. Can you guys see this? All right. Uh, everything is depressing. Next page. <laughs> I don't even know where to go for news anymore. People die. I can't. This is what he was talking about. Like, it's like, why? Why read the news to a certain point? You read the news uh, to the extent of where you can protect your family and shit and then dodge that shit like a rookie porn star in her first bukkake. Just, just dodge. Just dodge. Dodge every shitty fucking depressing article. There's two strains of it. Kids can have it. Smokers may have it. You might die. Nope, not today. I'm focusing on... Hey, uh, John uh, Krasinski came out with a YouTube talk show called uh, Some Good News. I recommend it to people if you haven't seen it. It's the guy from The Office and... Uh, that other series, he tried to be action hero too, but he's too cute <laughs> from the office and nobody takes him seriously. The other series, you guys know, on Amazon. I forget. That guy. That's some good news. Watch that show if you want to go. I get too crazy. Um, let's see what you guys have to say here. Uh, uh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm totally, you know, I was, I totally don't want to leave. I'm working on fucking doing this. Uh, so it goes lives on all the, goes live on all the channels at once, you know, but there's so much fucking, so many settings and so many things can, can go wrong. And I miss Paul. <laughs> I miss Paul. He allowed me so many fucking like Zen moments where I can focus on what's important. I miss you, buddy. Hey, we should have Paul on the podcast. Would you guys, did you guys miss Paul? I, he did a little jingle thing, uh, like a little cover by an Alex Vela song or something on Instagram and Alex Vela, we shared them and uh, it was a pretty good uh, ukulele song. Uh, and now he's more famous than me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, maybe we should have him on. Hey, let's call Paul. What do you guys say? You know what? Fuck that. Let's call Paul. We're all about spontaneous over here, right? Call Paul Maria on speaker. Oh, no, I don't know how to call him. I want to... Let's let's see what he does. No. FaceTime Paul Maria on speaker. I don't even feel bad because if he's uh, in his underwear, uh, he deserves it because not even watching the show. Oh, did he just close it? Paul, if you're watching, you got to write to me to not call you anymore. Oh, this little thing. Let's see. <laughs> better call Paul. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. Better call Saul. You guys see that show? It's pretty good. I didn't see the last season, though. I, I It just kept blue balling me. I wanted to know what the hell. So uh, I think it finished. Um, What's up, dude? Uh, been okay, so too. <laughs> Benny, you're live on the podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, hijack, motherfucker. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> if you was if you was a true trooper, you would have known you were alive. No, you couldn't have known. I didn't say no. <laughs> uh, I, listen, you can't really hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah, because you're also in a mixer. Uh, how about some English, buddy? English. Because so, uh, you, am live. I in the podcast or not? You are, motherfucker. You're live. There's three oh, people okay. here. Uh, Ra Raluca is here. Vlad Petra is here. Raluca is here again. Rap P. Rap P. How do you pronounce that? This, this dude's called Rap and then another P. Rap P. It, it took me by surprise. Now I don't even know. You speak Romanian. You speak Klingon. Like, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Listen, Doug, we just had our uh, Mark Edward Davis. I believe you met, met him here when we did the the podcast here in Romania with uh, For Fearless. Did you meet him? I don't know if you did. Uh, this gentleman, and he just wrote, wrote a book, and I had him on as a guest. It was a very lovely discussion. I wish it could have uh, lasted more. And if you haven't seen it, this is me uh, telling you to see it uh, after I uh, end this call. Okay. No, I just wanted to see if you're watching the podcast or not. I, I know where your loyalties lie now. It's to your girlfriend. No, I I really don't get every word you say because I don't hear you that well. Ah, fuck. I don't. I, I, I mean, I can. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but you really have to pronounce it. Really, you know. Dog, it's too, it's too bad. I think it's my phone connection. Hold on. It might be. Listen, man, I was just fucking, I, I mean, I was fucking around. It's okay. No. Let's do a proper podcast thing when we can catch up uh, soon. You want to do it next Wednesday? Yep. Okay, let's do it Wednesday. Uh, I might have another guest Wednesday. Uh, if not, we'll do it. Uh, we'll talk uh, near Wednesday and we'll set it up. Um, that being okay, said, sure thing. we have some uh, new work, dog. So uh, after uh, I close this live, I'm going to call you to give you all the details. Uh, I thought it was going to be funnier, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, and uh, it's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> Catch you later, Paul. <laughs> Say bye to the people. See ya. Peace. See ya. Peace. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right, people. Uh, oh, I should still have this dark thingy on. Uh, that was the podcast. Uh, I wish uh, I had more things and I was more prepared, but the more main point of it was uh, Mark Edward Davis. I, st I saw some a lot of cool shows and some other things uh, I want to talk to you about, but since I didn't do it last week, I don't want to do it. Uh, I'm going to my hometown, Constanza, for a few days uh, just to see my mom first time in like February. I miss uh, the hell out of her. Um, I kind of extra took care today, you know, like gloves and mask and everything, trying to be like not expose myself in case uh, something happens. Not to, uh, that's some big pressure not to like give your family COVID. You know, it's easy to say, yeah, I'm whatever, 30, and there's 1% of me fucking shooting, you know, ki kicking the bucket on this one. But when I just think about the fact that I want to see my mom and maybe also my grandma. And stay in the house for a few days. Fuck. 
I don't know. I just brushed my teeth uh, on the third time today. It has nothing to do with COVID. I'm just like that. <laughs> I'm going crazy. Uh, she'll be okay. Uh, it was lovely to hear from you guys. I will uh, see you next Wednesday and hopefully get you that video I was talking about too. Have a nice evening, y'all. Peace.